Hi, I'm Lauren Rayner, and I'm going to show you how to sheet mulch your vegetable garden. Sheet mulching is my favorite way of gardening. It's a permaculture technique. If you don't know anything about permaculture, do a search on YouTube and you will learn more about it. But it's, a, it's an organic, uh, easy way to garden. Um, it takes a little bit of time in the spring to prepare the ground, but you don't have to do any weeding once it's all done. Um, it's just the preparation, then planting and harvesting. So you've got whole season of weed-free gardening. It's organic, it rots down, it lasts the whole season. In this method of sheet mulching, I'm using uh, various materials. Uh, here, you, um, is, you can see the top layer. Underneath, we put down a layer of cardboard first, and then we put other mulching material on top. Um, you can use other materials for sheet mulching, um, such as uh, paper or newspaper. Um, if you're going to use newspaper or paper, you want to use about six sheets uh, thick. On top of the cardboard here, we've used two different types of mulch. There's many types of mulch that you can use, um, but we just happen to have on hand um, a byproduct uh, from our uh, cushion business um, called spelt husk, which is this material here. Um, we, we put that on and then we've scattered a thin layer of wood chips on top of that. We, we get wood chips um, either free or we have a truckload delivered to us for about $40. Um, if, you're in a, if you live in a part of the country or the world where there's a lot of trees, where trees have to be cut down every so often, sometimes tree surgeons will deliver, it, deliver the wood chips to you for free. So we add, we add another type of material on top of the cardboard for three, three reasons. Um, it, one, it adds more weight to the, to the cardboard so the cardboard doesn't blow away. Um, it looks a lot better than just having cardboard on the ground. It looks a lot more natural. Um, and also it adds more organic material to the ground. Um, and, you know, it's, it, when it comes to organic gardening, that's one of the main uh, things that you want to be doing is adding material to the ground to feed the organisms in the soil. Another point to sheet mulching is it's a great way to keep moisture in as far as as well as keeping the weeds down but it does keep the moisture in especially if you live in a uh, an area of the country or world where you tend to get droughts. Okay before we start I'm just gonna show you how I've prepared my garden first. Um, I treat this like a giant worm farm basically. Um, I use a broad fork to aerate the soil, but I don't turn it over. Um, I do that for a couple of reasons. One, um, if you turn over the soil, you, you kill off a lot of the, the microbial activity that lives on the surface. Um, and two, I don't like to chop up my worms. <laughs> um, now as you can see here, um, what I've done is I've gone through and I've, I've cut down all of the dead matter and I've left it on the ground. I don't remove it because this um, over time will become uh, worm food and microbial food which continues to feed the soil. So as you can see here, I had uh, my last year's crop of corn. I've chopped that up, I've just broken it down and laid it on the ground. Um, I've gone through and I've used a broad fork. If you don't know what a broad fork is, you can do a, a quick YouTube search um, to show you the process of that. Basically, it aerates the soil, but it doesn't turn it over. Um, and then after that, I've, I've put my amendments on. Um, I've put on some fertilizer, some homemade compost that I've made in our tumblers, our compost tumblers. I've put on some worm uh, poo or vermicompost that, that we, we made in our worm farm. Um, I've put a little bit of lime on here uh, just because our soil is a little bit acidic and vegetables like to grow in a more um, alkaline uh, pH. I've also added some uh, potash from our, our wood burning furnace that we've collected over the winter. So 
all of these amendments I've put on first. Oh, and one last step. Um, I'll show you in another video. I also make a um, actively aerated compost tea, which uh, I'll show you later. Um, I make that in a special way, which grows uh, microbes. And then I spray that on just before I put the cardboard onto the onto the ground. It just adds more microbi mo microbial activity into the soil. Okay, before I put the cardboard on, I'm just going to show you a few things. I like to let some of my vegetables go to seed and drop their seeds. A lot of people uh, say not to do that, but um, I grow only heirloom uh, varieties. I don't grow any. Uh, hybrids or anything like that. So what we have here, just so you can see, are lots of uh, purple sprouting broccoli seedlings that are doing really good. We're in the middle of April now and these are far more advanced than any that you would buy in a, um, in a garden uh, center. Um, and they've survived the winter. Uh, we're in New York State and they Broccoli doesn't usually survive the winter, so I'm, I'm very happy that I've got all these, these seedlings that have survived the winter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mulch around these, and after I finish mulching, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig them up and replant them in my bed. Okay, there's also some weeds here, you can see. Um, now, with weeds, this sheet mulching technique, um, we just ignore the weeds, we'll just cover, we'll just put our cardboard right over the top of it. We're not going to try and take the weeds out, because these will die underneath the car cardboard within two or three weeks, which will then add nutrient to the soil and food for the worms. Okay, and also, I've got a few vegetables from last year that have survived the winter. These are a type of kale, I think it's curly kale. And what I like to do, I don't, I don't pull these up, I will let them um, continue to grow. We'll get some fresh early spring greens off of these. Um, and they will um, start to shoot uh, very soon and try and make flowers and drop their seeds. Um, you can, what we do, and you, you can do this as well, is you can keep cutting the, the shoots and eat them like purple sprouting or green sprouting broccoli. And here's some, some more uh, kale. This is a different variety, which has survived the winter. I think this is a purple Russian kale. And as you can see, these are, these are growing well, and they're, they're actually starting to um, send up shoots uh, to flower. Um, so we can, we can pick these. Um, here, there's a, there's a top there. I don't know if you can zoom in on this Barbie. But you can see this is just starting to send up flowering shoots. So you can, and these will do this uh, very quickly. Um, every day you have to, you'll, if you keep picking them, you can have some fresh shoots every, every day about. Um, you can keep doing that and then eventually you can let them flower. Well, I do, I let them flower and I either collect the seeds in the fall or if I want, I can let them just drop their seeds and have, have uh, the new seedlings next spring, which I, I will dig up and, and replant. I've also noticed that I left some of my radish stalks. I let them seed last year and I left them. And as you can see, they've, they've dropped their seeds and there's all of these radish seedlings here. Um, now when I come to mulch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mulch around this whole area. I'm not going to cover this area. I'm going to leave this to c continue to grow and have some early radishes.